Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Lee, aka Rolling Thunder, and today we are going to be discussing the motorcycle industry, whether it is dead or alive. So if that is of interest to you and you'd like to know more, sit back, relax, grab yourselves a cup of tea, and let us get in to the video. So ladies and gents, how are we all doing? I hope you're doing well. And as the title of the video suggests, we are going to be discussing the motorcycle industry and whether it's dead or alive. Now that's quite a broad statement to make about whether or not if the motorcycle industry is alive and well or slowly dying on its arse. But there is reason behind this video and that is, I have noticed just recently, a lot of dealerships are slowly closing down. For example, there's completely bikes up in Wales, I think it is, that have gone into administration. There's PH motorcycles in Crawley, which again have either closed their doors or they're in the process of closing their doors. There's a couple of little independent places that I know of that are also closed, i.e., one being Bike Nuts, who used to be a total sponsor of the videos of the channel. Um, apparently, for un unforeseen circumstances, they've uh, had to close their doors. Don't ask me why or how, I have no idea what's going on there. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to basically throw my, my hat in the ring in terms of what I think is going on and why. And I think, if I'm honest, it all boils down to one thing, and that's money. Yeah, a lot of uh, franchises that I've dealt with in the past, for example, P&H, where I did my V2 ride many, many years ago, well, I say many years ago, it was like three years ago. A slight exaggeration on my part, I have to admit. Yeah, apparently uh, a lot of dealers are going to administration or closing their doors due to uh, financial struggles or political struggles within the, the company and the brand and stuff like that. For example, I found out recently that, that uh, P&H, when they were selling bikes, they had a very, very small margin. And that was around about 12, 15 percent, something like that. And I'll be honest with you, it's no wonder why they close their doors. Literally, they're not making any money. Oh wow, look at the size of that boy. Hello. That's not a dog, that's a fucking horse, ladies and gentlemen. That is a horse. I think the motorcycle industry as a whole is going through a really, really tough time at the minute. And that's not through any fault of like, the little independents or the even the main dealerships, really. I just think right now, the UK especially, is going through a very, very tough economical time at the minute. And it doesn't help with like Euro 6 emissions or Euro 5.5 or whatever the fuck the most recent standard is. You know, it's not uh, it's not helping the motorcycle industry as a whole. And not only that, but the price of bikes these days are so expensive. Now, if you want a brand new bike, let's just say, for example, me being a Ducati fan, the new V4. The 2025 base model V4 is some in the region of 26, 28,000 pounds. That's without any add-ons. It's like, how can they, how can certain brands charge that much for, for bikes when they're straight out of the crate? And I know what you're gonna say, Lee, it's Ducati, what do you expect? They always overcharge. And you're not wrong. They do overcharge. Look at that beautiful man up there in that mirror. Sorry, a little bit of self-indulgence. But the R1 does strike a figure, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm getting distracted. I'm like a magpie looking at a shiny thing. Um, yeah, and not only that, the, the price of bikes these days are just stupidly expensive. You know, the, the second-hand market is still thriving, as I know, because, let's face it, both of my bikes that I currently own are second-hand. The, the Duke was for a dealer second-hand. The R1 was for a dealer second-hand, but all the way in Leeds. So, don't get me wrong, the second hand market is still f living and thriving well, but the brand new bike market, I do literally think it's dying on its backside. And um, I was watching a video this morning actually, by a guy called, uh, what's his name? Uh, Tom Robbie Rides Motorbikes. And I'll put a link to the video itself, either in a card above or in the, in the description and he's hit the nail on the head like perfectly these days when it comes to new bikes or even you know relatively new used bikes 
the market is just it's ridiculous you know I understand when it comes to dealerships having their overheads to pay and you know staff to pay and obviously they've got to pay the supplies for the bikes and so on I get that I do but when it comes to like the end user like me and you it doesn't work out well especially from a financial point of view you'll get a brand new bike like like I said we'll take the the v4 to which I really really want but I know I can never afford right now until I retire which is not for another 60 uh, 26 years and it's like how the fuck are people supposed to afford things like the insurance the tax the servicing and all that stuff in between it's like it's it's got to a point where money is ruining the industry and don't get me wrong I know everyone needs to make a profit somewhere along the line but why is it always the average Joe like us like you like me like a lot of my mates that ride motorcycles like a lot of people that want to get into motorcycles but don't know where to start or can't afford it you know you can't just do your, do your test get your license take a stroll down to your local motorcycle dealership or second hand market dealership whatever but like, oh yeah I've just passed my test I've got five grand to spend what you got because to get anything decent these days you've got to be spending on the used market mind you anywhere between six and eight thousand pounds and that's if you're lucky I mean I got a really good deal on this R1 it was seven and a half thousand pounds down from nine and a half I think it was but that's only because I did the shopping around then with a little bit of help from Ben at my work he actually found this for me and that's how I was able to able to get it and I was able to get on a fairly good rate on finance too but not everyone has the facilities to pay for a bike outright I mean if I had my way and I had a decent enough credit score I'd quite happily go to my bank or bill society or finance or authority or whoever the fuck it is that does these days does the actual finance these days and I'd be like look I want a 20 grand loan to go and buy myself a motorcycle then I could buy it own it outright and if I was to decide to sell it it wouldn't matter because the capital is the loan not the bike but not everyone has that you know there was a lot of people who would prefer to buy stuff on finance which is fine because if you've got a low credit score that can help as I've found out throughout the years having poor credit isn't a bad thing but it's not a good thing either ideally you want a somewhat reasonable credit score so you can get loans and credit cards and stuff like that and I've only really learned that over the last couple of years and at the big age of 40 I think I've got a somewhat decent credit score now not decent enough that I could get say a 20 or 30 grand loan and put a deposit on a house or be able to afford the newest and greatest super bike or super naked like the MT10 hashtag if you haven't seen it go watch it because I did a review on the 2024 MT10 a couple of weeks ago again I'll leave a description either in a card above or in the description and that scared the living shit out of me because I didn't see that coming until it was too late but thankfully it was only plastic if you saw that of course but where do I see the uh, the motorcycle industry now I think if things keep going the way they're going like with the euro emissions I think we're on 5.5 or 6 now I, I can never remember which is which these days but whatever we're on it's only going to get worse it's only going to get worse for the UK market and the European markets as well you know all these absolute snowflakes who think they know how to run the world and whatever else you know for example these stop oil activists and all that kind of rubbish I mean don't get me wrong I understand we've only got one world and we need to look after it but it's not our problem do you know oh, squash squirrel you know <laughs> it's gonna sound exceptionally selfish of me but please just hear me out the current generation like me and people around my age between 
25 and 40. You know, it's we're just living in this world. We didn't fuck it up. It was a previous generation that fucked it up. And I can guarantee you the next generation will say the same thing about this generation. Oh, the previous generation fucked it up for us. Now we've got to make it better and blah, 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 blah. It's like, fine, do you know what? <laughs> yeah, fine, we might have fucked up the, the world before it was your time, but at the same time, you know, everyone's got to live, everyone's got a life to lead. Go fuck yourself in the nicest possible way. Or as my, or as my work colleague Jade would say, go fuck yourself respectfully. The way I see it with the motorcycle industry and the position it's currently in, nothing's ever going to get better until the end user gets a better cut of it. Does that make any sense? You know, wages haven't gone up in, in line with inflation. You know, yearly bonuses haven't gone up in line with inflation. The cost of living hasn't changed within line to be in line with inflation. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like we're not living, to, uh, working to live. We're living to work. Because if we don't work, you don't live. If you don't live, you don't earn money. If you don't earn money, you know, you you die. Let's, 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 let's be honest. Without food and drink and a roof over your head and clothes on your back, you're going to end up dead. But the simple fact that the motorcycle industry is having such a hard time in a minute. You know, it, I don't know if it's the same situation for the car manufacturers or the car market. I don't think it is, to be honest, because you've got hybrid cars, you've got electric cars, you've got cars that run on nitrogen, you've got cars that probably run on fucking fart gas. You know, you, you could, they can probably make cars that run on chip fat if they really wanted to. I know famously years ago, someone actually ran a Honda C90 step through or a Honda Cub on chip fat. Now, I don't know how good or how bad that was for the motor, but they did it. And I know that uh, Kawasaki have recently done some kind of hybrid motor I don't know anything about it, I'll be honest with you, so I'm not going to comment. Oh, another dead fox. Ugh. That's two dead animals I've seen this morning, it's not nice. But it's just, yeah, I, I don't know. The UK motorcycle market is, it's slowly dying in my opinion. The cost of importing the bikes is getting too expensive. The cost of selling the bikes through dealerships is getting too expensive. The cost of owning them is getting too expensive. Insurance, again, is an absolute killer, especially for new riders. You can't, you can't expect a new rider that's been, you know, just past their CBT, gone and bought themselves a little 125, a brand new 125, mind you, that has absolutely no problems, you know, completely and utterly brand new out the crate, and then you've got to pay almost the same amount for insurance on it. And that's not fair. That's not fair on the new riders. That's not fair on the older riders, like myself, who've been on the road for what seems like an absolute lifetime now. You know, I've been riding on the streets of London and Surrey and been around the country a few times. Even at the age of 40, getting insurance for two bikes, it's not cheap. For example, I will do a video about insurance at some point in the near future, but my insurance, third party fire and theft, and I have that on both my bikes, it's the absolute minimum that I, that I have, you know, because you never know what could happen. So third party fire and theft is the minimum requirements that I choose when it comes to getting insurance. But even for me, like I say, at the big age of 40, I'm still looking at over 600 pounds a year. And that doesn't include MOTs, that doesn't include servicing or anything like that. It's literally just the legal requirement that you have to pay to be on the road in the UK is insurance, but obviously tax. But each bike is like 86 pound a year. Okay, fine. That's what, 170, 172 pounds a year, roughly. Now, normally that's not, that, that would annoy me. You know, it's a price you gotta pay to be on the road. And equal to that, people that are looking to do their tests, the test costs themselves are astronomical. Someone who wants to do their CBT, they're looking at 180, 200 quid, depending on where you go. And that's so you have the privilege of riding on the road for two years or so with L plates, unless you do your full test between in that time, depending on your age, of course. It's just astronomical. It's absolutely nosebleedingly expensive. For example, um, on average, I think a lot of people that I've spoken to through my work, like if they're 25 and over, that have gone for their full test, are spending upwards of a thousand pound on lessons than the actual test itself. It's like, what is going on? It was never that expensive when I did my test. 
admittedly, back when I did my test, it was the old, uh, I think it was A1 uh, restricted direct access test, I think it was called. And you could ride absolutely anything you wanted. Didn't matter whether it was a 125 or a 1000cc sports bike or a sports cruiser, it made no difference. You could ride whatever you wanted as long it was reduced in power to 33 bhp. Now that, uh, that license doesn't exist anymore as far as I'm aware. But that's the license I did 20 odd years ago. And I, back in the day, made the mistake of doing my CBT twice. I did it once on a twist and go 50cc moped and then I did it again on a 125 geared bike. Not realising I didn't actually need to. So learn from that mistake ladies and gentlemen. If you want to do a CBT and you want to get geared 125, you only have to do your CBT once. But anyway, I've kind of gone off on a bit of a tangent there. So let me know in the comments down below, ladies and gentlemen, what you think the situation of the motorcycle industry is where you are. Let me know what you think. Because it'll be interesting to see what people's thoughts are. With regards to whether or not you think the, the industry is in a good place or a bad place. Because personally speaking, I think it's in an awful place. And it could do with a serious revamp and a serious rethink. Not just from the supplier's point of view, but also from the retailers, the bike manufacturers and the end user's point of view as well. Because until something gets done and the cost of living goes down and interest rates go down and just everything becomes better for the average person like you and me, no one is going to come out of this smelling of roses. But that's just my opinion. If you have an opinion on what you think the UK motorcycle market's at right now, or where you are in the world, then feel free to put it in the comments down below and we will discuss it. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you have been amazing. I have been Lee, aka Ronnie Fonda, saying look after yourselves, look after each other, stay safe on the road, be aware of COVID-19, be safe, be happy. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, adios.